All right, folks, today we suffer in the spirit of stupid challenges. 30 minutes of hell, 1.6 million casualties to be inflicted on the German Reich. Iron Man mode is on and historical AI focuses are on. Let's go. And before we get into this, this is a strategy that I saw in a video of by a YouTuber named Creamy Lou. And somebody in my Discord pointed me at it and it's interesting. I haven't seen it used a lot and I haven't personally used it either. So I want to see if we can replicate it. Let's go. First off, we're going to take the arm and separate them out into three armies. Yeah, three armies under a field marshal. We'll take the best field marshals that we can find. Uh, Sikorsky's not bad, but the other guy here has old guard, which gives him extra entrenchment. Difficult choices, difficult choices. My gut says to go with Sikorsky and we'll give him charismatic. You can go with organization first as well. Reinforce rate is also good. Eh, I like that division recovery rate. We're gonna need it. In terms of generals, just pick the good ones. Hide the defense generals with good stats. Then for the unit design itself, we are going to take the base infantry unit. We're going to remove the cavalry recon, replace it with engineers. And because we will have very, 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 very big problems with guns, it's not a bad idea to remove one infantry unit from this. So we end up with a 16 combat with unit. Not ideal by a long shot, but we have very little options. Then we are going to duplicate that and create a very Variant, call it whatever you want. And we're gonna add one support anti-air. And that is our second unit. The 16 divisions here are gonna turn into the new template, and the other 48 are gonna turn into the basic infantry template. I am I just realized I should probably change their icons so I can actually see what they are. With that done, we move on. Research. We are going to research all of the things that keep us alive. So guns, engineers, and then we are going to focus most of our efforts on anti-air because we will be constantly fighting under red air and if we can shoot down some of the enemy's casts all the better later on as we get more research slots available to us because well we we go way way ahead of time on some of this infantry stuff uh, you can either keep going ahead of time or diversify into artillery maybe some airplanes probably the industry but do be aware it's very very unlikely that we'll actually get a lot of production capacity in this run speaking of production capacity we are going to put all all of our military factories on guns. No airplanes, not for now. We're gonna keep one factory on support equipment. We're gonna get rid of the tanks. I like trucks. We won't be using trucks. No, instead we'll be making towed anti-air. So one factory on towed anti-air, everything else on infantry equipment. We are desperately short a whole lot of guns and I need to make as many of them as I can. To that end, we are going to build up a ton of military factories in Krakow. It's not a bad idea to also build a couple more land forts in this area. So essentially what we're gonna do is create a sort of fallback line between the province of Katowice, the province above Katowice, the forest tile above Krakow, Krakow itself, and then this tile here in between, well, it's just this tile here right next to Zaulzi. Speaking of Zaulzi, we're gonna go into our occupied territories. We're gonna release Czechoslovakia as a puppet. Ugh. Then we are going to release Belarus as a puppet. Ugh. And we are going to release the Republic of Ukraine as a puppet. Ugh. There. Disgusting. We are also going to return this slab of, what is this, Wilno? We are going to return that to Lithuania. Yes, we just gave away half our country. Trust me, it's it's going to be worth it. Trust me on this one. Focuses. We are going to start with the castle because we will need to manage our sanation right and left. We're going to start with the castle because it's, it's a good way to start that. And then we are going to prepare for the inevitable. It's not available yet, but it will be soon. This is going to be the big one. If we can survive until this one finishes, we will actually have enough guns to equip most of our divisions and holding will be so much easier. But first the castle, then prepare for the inevitable. And then we are going to go all the way down to either King of the New Castle, Triumph of OZN, or maintain the dictatorship. Depends on what you want to do in your run. Just make sure you get one of these three before the Sanation right or left rebels. So take your pick of the focuses that you think you'll need and then move on. Personally, I think it's worth it just to rush down here, either to maintain the dictatorship or a new king in the castle. Uh, OZN could be nice because it leads to a lot of claims that might help you out. Then we're going to decisions. We're going to start off with a bit of radio propaganda, some anti-democratic raids, back towards the political tab, and we are going to hire Joseph Haller here, the war industrialist. We are going to hire the infantry expert. We'll replace him later, but for now he will do. We are going to hire a chief of the army. 
the only one we have. And we're going to add a military theorist, the Tomislav here. Still have a lot of political power and might as well pick up the material designer for infantry equipment. That leaves us with a lot of political power still in our hands. And we're going to hold on to that so we can use partial mobilization. We can go up to free trade here and then to extensive conscription here once the war starts. The 16 divisions we have are going to be setting up a fallback line in the provinces of Katowice and the forest tile above it. This is the critical part of our line. This right here is where things go to, well, go go to hell, usually. Mostly because the tile up here can be attacked from many, many sides. Then we're going to complete the donut by drawing a fallback line through the province right next to Zalzi. Krakow, the forest tile, and then Zalzi there. Just going to try to maximize the overlap here. So we, uh, well, we have a fighting chance. Everything is going to fall back to this little horseshoe shape here. It's a lot clearer once Germany's moved in, but essentially we have a, f a horseshoe that is closed off by Zalzi, which will remain neutral, and right smack in the middle is one province in Krakow that will not be in contact with the enemy, and we are constantly going to use that one province of no contact to cycle our units. Sounds complicated, it's really not, you'll see. I could also improve worker conditions, but I want my factory output to be pumping while it still can, because those guns are going to be very much required. All right, let's get going this is going to suck oh and it might not be a terrible idea to improve relations with the soviets the turks uh pretty much anyone that you think can give you guns at some point but be aware in 1939 most of these countries don't have guns because they don't start with large stockpiles they actually start with deficits and it's going to take a while for these guys to you know get guns for you as you can tell these strength bars are not impressive so it's paramount that we survive long enough to prepare for the inevitable those then 10,000 guns are going to be a game changer units are in position they're all getting their entrenchment which is going to be the only thing keeping us alive and for that end in terms of officer corps we are going to prioritize getting static warfare we're going to follow that up with getting prepared defense and then grabbing a spirit of the army probably elevated engineering corps for the extra entrenchment speed as far as the spirit of the academy goes you can either go with political loyalty for additional stability, but stability is not really going to matter all that much. Personally, I prefer to take bold attack to level our generals, because attack means you inflict more casualties on the enemy. Tenacious defense is nice, but I want to kill Germans. And it has kicked off. The instant Germany declares war, pause the game. And every province that is, well, you could do it the Krakow, but every province that Germany has to walk through, you're going to select it, and you're going to hit this button, Scorched Earth. Yes, we are going to make the Germans suffer suffer while they walk through our land. This is effectively just buying us time. Time is what we need and hopefully it will make sure the Germans suffer on their way to the front. And we're going to slow the game down and now all we have to do is wait and cycle units. That's it. We wait and we cycle units. We're going to join the allies, obviously, and that's it. It's all we can do right now. We wait. The longer it takes for Germany to walk into your land, the longer you have to make use of a couple of military factories to pump out more guns. And with that, the Germans have reached our final positions. Now, what you could do is create a field marshal order here with an attack line there and replace all the orders of the generals with garrison orders in neutral countries that you can't reach. It's... I consider it cheating so I don't do it or you can just assign the generals to this uh, field marshal order now. The downside of that is that the troops will now move in less predictable patterns but at least we'll start getting a planning bonus so we'll see how long this holds. And you can now also see why we gave away all that territory. This is the result. We are 99% towards capitulation. We are on the brink. The absolute edge of destruction but poland is not yet lost that is why we gave away vilnius released belarus ukraine and zalzi because if we hadn't those would all consider be victory points that we would also lose and we would be dead by now so yes there was a method to the madness and now we hold we hold we cycle units and we hold additionally if you're feeling frisky what you could do is build an airbase in katowice so the allies might be inclined to, you know, land some planes there, but no guarantees. As far as the uh, forts are concerned, what you could do is queue up the forts and drag the factories underneath the forts, and every time they are not able to build the forts because of ongoing combat, they'll put that effort towards the factory. Every time combat stops, a little bit more effort can be poured into a factory. It's just a little thing that might help. 
long term. And you will be looking at red bubbles for quite a long time. So you need to actively cycle units in and out of combat. You might have to use last stand, last stand memory, but eventually you should be able to stabilize your line if you can last until prepare for the inevitable. That is the most critical moment. If you can last until prepare for the inevitable, you should be good to go. I almost forgot, but we also need to go up to war economy, get extensive conscription and grab free trade. I just wasted a couple of days on that, a significant amount of days, so don't be like me. And yes, this entire run is desperate. So it very much looks like I'll be losing a couple of provinces. I can't afford to lose any provinces. So I am going to do a little bit of cheese. I'm going to find the strongest unit that is still in combat in each of the tiles I'm losing. And I'm going to assign them to a different general. There we go. Then we're going to give that general there, that army a new general. And we're going to hit last stand. That will allow combat to continue. Other units can then quickly go and reinforce. And it costs a fraction of the command power of doing it to an entire army. So this is 6.3 command power. If I were to do it to an entire army, that is 47 command power. So pretty good deal. And that is essentially how I will keep this line going until I get my 10,000 free guns. There we go. Prepare for the inevitable. In terms of focuses, I am now going to get the sanation left and right because we need to deal with these things. These lead to a civil war eventually and, and well just we can't have that so we're gonna deal with that first i've got a german paratrooper division fliege division i didn't know germany built paratroopers that's pretty cool all right we have spies now uh, i'm gonna start using a spy network to take the pressure off getting a spy network makes uh, in short it makes combat easier if you have spies in the area doctrines we're gonna try and keep our doctrines going every land lease is very much welcomed in terms of political power just take whatever you want really anything that is potentially useful like the elusive gentleman here now it does help that we have most of our units equipped by now as you can see the red bubbles have eased out of existence and yeah the, the germans have just bled themselves dry oh yikes 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 so the germans have just bled themselves dry, constantly attacking our lines. Just have to hold. We just have to hold. In terms of focuses, I've decided to go with the left because I want to see what this does. It will allow me to get the between the seas concept opened up and this leads to, you know, more fun focuses. Oh, we are running out of manpower at an alarming rate. Still though, I mean, these kills are insane. Painful for us, but insane. Well, there goes Paris. Great. It does seem like our line is now rock solid. Our units did end up getting mostly equipped, especially the guns. The guns is the big one. Once you get that focus and a little room to breathe, you're golden. Germany had to devote troops to Denmark, to France, to the low countries, and unfortunately, Norway. Sorry, Norway. And as a result, we had a period of relative, relative peace or rest, where we did have time to get entrenchment up. Our units managed to replenish, recover some Org, and we got a couple of land doctrines in and at this point we are untouchable like i can keep this going at speed five and germany will never push us unless they launch a mass assault but they're wasting troops covering all of our puppets they're fighting in africa i think all in all i think we're good we're gonna make our goal because we're almost there one million German casualties for 175,000 Poles. I think I like those odds. I like those odds very much. What I don't like is Italy taking control of each. Oh my god, I hate this. Wait, wait, what? What? Strong government? Social reform. Difficult, difficult choices. I think we need strong government. Well, the flag looks okay. I don't like this man's egg-shaped head, but we'll be fine, I guess. What I've also started to do is with our limited remaining manpower and our slight excess of guns, I'm starting to make our divisions a little bit longer, bring it up to 18 combat with, and I'm slowly going to start adding in support artillery as well. Uh, we, we need a lot more artillery to do that, but slowly but surely, we will get somewhere. Now I'm going to go now 
uh, Baltic security and grab the rest of these. Now, these German units are so weak. They've really expended themselves. Uh, as long as I don't overextend myself. Oh, there goes Yugoslavia. So they're going to stretch themselves even further. Now, as long as I don't really screw it up with my counteroffensive, I can actually get something done here. I'm feeling very, very confident. If I can push to the river here, the Vistula River, I might be able to retake control of the state if I could control the state. I have more factories, more manpower, more everything. Yugoslavia has capitulated, but that's not my problem. All right, now we have a river line to defend. Germany is still super stretched out because a lot of our troops are down there, I guess. Let's keep pushing north while we can. Just keep pushing north, keep pushing. What is the German AI even doing? It's like they're not even home. Their tanks are still giving me a bit of a hard time, but I am retaking a lot of land. In hindsight, it might be a bit cocky of me, so I should probably ease off the accelerator now and just dig in and hold for a bit. Yes, I will need additional troops for what I am wanting to do here. Yeah, I'm gonna hold what I have and then... And then what? Oh my god, we got an encirclement. Ah! We got an encirclement. All right, I'm gonna hold here. I think this is as far as I can push out without really throwing. I don't want to risk losing too much. No oh my god, no. No! They're pushing me back. I got cocky. I need more troops. I, I have manpower. I just... I don't have enough equipment to train more divisions. Can I train a couple more? No, I don't have the guns. Oh, I should have stockpiled guns more. I may be forced to fall back to previous positions. But while I'm doing this, I am killing more Germans. And it's a lot more interesting. Not only do I want to finish the challenge, I want to win this campaign. I want to see if we can put Poland back on the map. It's going to be a pretty big challenge, but I think we are up to it. Don't you? Hold, damn it, hold. Use every trick in the book to hold. Did not need that. So we're now at war with axes and common turn. Great. Oh, but Poland is not yet lost. I'm thinking maybe push up to Warsaw and the tile there. If I can manage that whenever I can, well, you know, I counterattack whenever the Germans have launched one of their attacks and repelled it. So if I can push up to the Vistula River, I actually have a very good defensive line. I'm able to scrape together a couple more units every now and then, just force deploy them, get as many units out into the field as possible, and who knows, it might still be possible. As far as the challenge is concerned, we've killed 2.8 million Germans, so yes, 30 minutes of hell has been completed. It's only cost us 332,000 poles, so I'd say this is a very positive KD. This is a very good strategy. It is a bit reliant on RNG, so you'd need Germany to give you some breathing room. In my case, very lucky that they decided to go to the war with the Low Countries, Denmark and Norway all at the same time, spreading their forces, giving me just enough room to breathe to get my troops reinforced, dug in and equipped. But yeah, if, if you hold up to that horseshoe, you're definitely going to kill some Germans. I just want to up the ante and liberate the rest of Poland, but I am very much excited to continue this run. I recommend you check out Creamy Lou's video. It, it does work. And the US has joined the Allies. All right, all right, all right, all right. Things are moving. Good. I can take Warsaw. I know I can take Warsaw. I can feel it in my bones. I can take Warsaw. Yes! Ah, I've taken Warsaw. All right, with Warsaw in our hands, join the attack on the tile beneath. And we have restored the Vistula line mostly. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We got a bunch of manpower from that. We are no longer partially capitulated. Well, we are still partially capitulated, but we're in much better shape now. A lot of factories, a lot of additional manpower. I feel good about this. I feel, well, maybe good is not the right word, but I feel okay about this. I feel okay about this run. I'm going to go and grab a couple of extra units because I will need them. Manpower is still not great. Sudeten Mountaineers and Prussian Guard. Free units. All right, Sudeten Mountaineers and the Prussian Guard. Couple of free units. I'm not going to say no to free units, so add another general. Uh, yeah, you can command my troops. I'm desperately short on steel. Fortunately, I can find more in my focus tree. The Polish focus tree is actually really powerful. You know, I'd very much wish the allies weren't as useless, because I've done 78% of the work. I really need a D-Day, boys. I...
I'm not really able to push out much more until I create more troops. It all just slows me down so much and I can only push so far because eventually I'll bump up to the Soviet Union, which is gonna suck. All right, looks like the allies are doing something. They've declared war on Vichy France. So maybe they can strike at the soft underbelly. Meanwhile, I'm grinding down the flower of the German army. I'm considering making a breakout here towards the Belarusian border, maybe create some sort of pocket there, but I am very afraid of bumping up against the Soviet Union. I'm not ready to fight both the Axis and the Soviets. I just don't have the troops. I do have a lot of equipment now. North Africa has been cleaned up nicely. I've actually decided to commit a couple of fighters to help in the North African campaign, you know, farm a little bit of air experience. I've also assigned a couple of factories to make more fighters because the rest of my stockpiles are good. I'm just holding this cordon I have here. The Germans attack, then they don't, then they attack, then they don't. I'm just not really able to push out from here. We're just gonna hold. The allies are gonna be a major distraction soon, I hope. And I'm gonna keep training more troops. All right, I've decided waiting around is for schmucks. I'll start my own counterattack considering the allied invasion here has failed. D-Day has failed. The allies are managing to just, you know, do nothing. Oh. Oh, maybe here. Nah, all in all, it's it's gonna come down to me. I'm going to cause as much chaos as I can behind the Axis lines and do what I can to make Poland free. It is a noble cause, and I suspect many Poles will be willing to die for it. And many Poles will. I absolutely hate this frontline system because it constantly keeps trying to include Belarus in it, which I don't want. Stop reorganizing my front. It's fine the way I have it. This is what, oh, for God's sake, it keeps doing it and I hate it. Ah, <laughs> Poland hasn't even retaken all of Poland, but we are occupying foreign land. We have seized Eastern Slovakia. All right, time to reorganize the fronts. A Soviet front, a Southern Axis front, and then I guess the main offensive is gonna be to the North. This is gonna be interesting, if nothing else. Please, Paradox, fix this. I can't even draw a front line properly because of how stupid your frontline system is. Italy is getting its teeth kicked in, which I always applaud. So interesting to see how this goes. What I don't quite know is why all these German troops are in Syria. They're about to die, but they're still there and I don't know how they got there. Meanwhile, the liberation continues. Poland will be free and Poles will make her free. Oh yeah, this is it. This is it. The allies have landed in southern France. There's the D-Day going on. There's fighting over here in the Balkans in Italy. Germany is very, very distracted. I'm going to keep pushing out now. This is the moment. If I can rush towards Danzig and uh, crush the pocket of Konigsberg, there may be a chance for us to redeem the Polish spirit. But it's going to be a tough fight. We're gonna give it our all. Either we win or we die here. Oh, yes! Okay, our troops have reached Danzig. Of course, the front has completely been destroyed because front lines are stupid and nobody knows how they work apparently. I am out of trains though because I am being constantly bombed and there's really nothing I can do about that other than try to outproduce the bombing which isn't going to happen but the man can try. And with that we have the entire German North cleaned up. Uh, unfortunately I'm now rubbing shoulders with the Soviet Union and the Soviets have given military access to the Germans I think. Naval access at least so that is pretty stupid. Well I'll, I'll just have to keep that army parked. I have to keep two armies parked on the Soviet border from now on, but everybody else, well, everybody else can party. And with this, Danzig is back in Polish hands. Oh, we've liberated more land on our own than the entire allied faction has so far. So uh, yeah, screw you guys. And the liberation of Poland continues unabated, step by step. Well, the numbers are, where are the numbers? Here are the numbers. Eight million kills. 8 million casualties inflicted by Poland. And we've also killed a good number of Soviets, like a million already. And all I've done is set up a defensive line and hold it. You know, I'm pretty sure I can launch an all-out assault on Germany and win. They're very preoccupied with all these naval invasions. Well, there goes Mussolini. That's great. Polish army is about to take Berlin. Imagine that. Imagine that. The situation we started with and now we are here pushing, pushing, pushing all out assault. Salt the 
Polish juggernaut cannot be stopped. It's just a matter of making sure I, I don't get my ass handed to me by the Soviets. And as long as I don't free up the Soviet border too much, I should be fine. I just need to defeat the Germans and then we can turn our attention to the Soviets. If we still want to even play that game. And there goes Hungary. Very nice. Oh, my front line's a mess. Oh, my front line's a disgusting mess. And there goes Germany with not a lot of stuff left. And now we make this peace deal something nice. I think we've earned some land here. And that ends our peace deal with Germany. And yeah, it looks disgusting. We have a German Republic and a German Empire. Oh, okay. But Polish Czechoslovakia came out of this a winner from Zauzi all the way to the full and highly competent Czechoslovakia once more. Other than that, the map looks pretty okay except for the two germanys that is and we've got a bunch of ships out of this deal because i always like to take a bunch of navies and um how about we go fight the soviets and see what we can do there time to bring the full might of my armies to bear well uh soviets are folding a lot quicker than i would have assumed i i do have the full might of the axis backing me at this point so yeah they they probably shouldn't have picked the fight with me but i'm going to enjoy taking all of this land. Well, this uh, all-out assault is expensive, but it, it certainly worked to break the Soviet back. Unfortunately, being in the Allies, for some reason, I cannot do collaboration governments, which kind of sucks, but I occupy all the land I need. I would just need to integrate Belarus and Ukraine and get the Lithuanian compliance up high enough, and I could reform the Commonwealth. However, this is going to take way too long. It's 19 45 already. I don't really want to defeat the Soviets. It's it's not a matter of can I do it. It's it's easy peasy lemon squeezy at this point. It's just that I don't want to keep playing for this long. I'd say we've won this. That is the entire Caucasus front of the Soviet Union destroyed. Everything here is trapped and going to die. Yeah, they really don't have all that many troops left. Well, they have a lot of troops left that are just not combat effective. Wow, that was quick. The Soviet Union has capitulated. Amazing. I'm going to use that just to grab a bunch of land and we'll call it a day then. Well, I chose not to get too greedy and as a result the map looks disgusting. So we have a Russian, Russian Federation and the Soviet Union. It's just horrific. But we have a massive Ukrainian puppet, a pretty big Belarus. We have all the land we need to at some point reform the Commonwealth. It's 1945 so I'm not actually going to do that but look at that. Poland triumphs. We have taken all of our German lands. We have massively grown a Czechoslovak puppet, a Ukrainian puppet, Belarusian puppet and we control the Baltic I'd say, considering where we started, not a bad game. A powerful Poland has arisen to really be a power in Europe. Now, I had a lot of fun playing this, and I hope you had a lot of fun watching. So I hope you enjoy this next video too. See ya.